Hey guys, it's Will here, and today I'm here with a review of quite possibly the most anticipated game of 2016, and that's Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. If you didn't catch this from the title already, this is your one and only spoiler warning because this is going to be a spoiler filled review where I dissect a lot of key plot details. So if you haven't played the game yet and you don't want me to spoil the plot for you, turn back now before you can no longer unsee this cursed treasure. I think that joke landed pretty well. Anyway, let's get into it. So just some backstory real quick for people that are new to the Uncharted series. Uncharted 4 Thief's End is obviously the fourth full-length console-based video game in the Uncharted series that began back in 2007 and can only be played on Sony consoles. The first three Uncharted were originally released on the PS3 in 2007, 2009, and 2011, but the great news is that you can play these on the PS4 now via the Nathan Drake Collection. The Uncharted series follows main protagonist and treasure hunter Nathan Drake, whose story seems to come full circle in Uncharted 4. The thing that I really liked about this game, even more so than the others, is that Drake is forced to make much more difficult decisions when it comes to not only his treasure hunting, but his family and loved ones as well. This is a game that is more so about family rather than treasure hunting and adventure, and that's something that's a little different for the Uncharted series. The very first chapter of this game, entitled The Lure of Adventure, allows us to jump back in time to when Drake was a child at an orphanage. The main point of starting the player right in chapter 1 as young Drake is to introduce us to Drake's older brother Sam and the kind of relationship that these brothers have even from a very young age. We also spend chapter 16, entitled The Brothers Drake, with the young Drake bros, and in totality these two chapters provide you with a lot of insight into just how much Drake looks up to his brother Sam. Each time I went into these playable flashback chapters though, my first instinct was like, damn it, I want to adventure and fight and travel to these beautiful locations, don't make me play as boring young Drake. But at the end of these two chapters I found myself saying, wow that was really worth it. I say it's worth it because it provides you a lot of context into why Drake is just so willing to drop everything and run off in search of the infamous pirate Henry Avery's treasure with Sam. Other than the fact that Drake was under the impression that he was saving Sam's life from the violent drug lord Hector Alcazar, I think Drake really does look up to his brother, and that's partly why he decides to go with him and search for this treasure. Drake is very impressionable when it comes to Sam, and while it's heavily implied that Drake decides to lie to his wife Alana to go on this grand treasure hunt with Sam because he feels guilty that Sam was locked up for 15 years, I think the real reason Drake goes on this hunt is twofold. The first reason being that Drake really loves and looks up to his brother and will follow him pretty much anywhere. This obviously includes an increasingly dangerous and reckless treasure hunt for Henry Avery's treasure. The second reason is that Drake missed the adventure life and was bored with his normal life regardless of how much he loves his wife Alana. When Alana puts all the pieces together and eventually locates Sam, Drake, and Sully, Alana tells Drake that he needs to stop lying to her as well as himself. They both come to the realization that they're not meant for a normal life. They're adrenaline junkies who crave adventure and excitement, and that's why they fell in love with each other because they're similar in that regard. Sam uses this trait of Drake's as justification for roping him into this adventure when he tells Sully that Drake is meant for this life. Although I feel that Drake was never truly going to say no to some brotherly bonding time with Sam, I think he also said yes to Sam's adventure request because he knows that Sam is going to undertake this hunt with or without Drake's help. Drake knows his experience and insights would be absolutely essential to Sam actually succeeding in his quest to find Avery's treasure, and without these insights, Sam would likely find himself dead. The evidence for this lies in this line that Drake delivers Sam to Sully. Will head off for without me? Come on, you'll get both of you killed. While you could argue that Drake is in sort of a fragile state here, and he's being emotional, I think Drake truly believes that without his help, Sam will die on this treasure hunt, and that's not something Drake can live with. At its roots, this game is much more a story about family and emotion rather than any of the Uncharted games were before. The other three Uncharted games featured a relatively immature and somewhat childish Drake. This Uncharted features a much more mature Drake that attempts to balance a number of different things at once, all in the hopes of being the good guy to everyone he loves. And that element is what made this Uncharted the best one in my opinion. The emotional decisions that Drake has to make, and ultimately the sacrifices as well, are what makes the story great. The stakes are higher than they've ever been for Drake before. He's dealing with the physical threat in front of him of Nadine, Rafe, and the Shoreline mercenaries, the invisible threat of Alcazar on Sam's life, the threat of losing Alana after lying to her, and ultimately putting everyone he loves in harm's way for what seems like two brothers reckless treasure hunt. As I previously stated, what gets this story moving is Drake and Sam deciding to undertake the extremely difficult task of locating Henry Avery's $400 million treasure. 
From there, Drake encounters a number of different obstacles, with the two main ones being Rafe and Nadine with their shoreline mercenaries. The encounters we get with our antagonists are fantastic and are ultimately as scripted as if they would be taking place in a box office film. The encounters I had with Rafe and Nadine were some of the best parts of the game in my opinion because the tension was so high that I was literally on the edge of my seat waiting to see what was going to happen and see who was going to find the treasure first in this amazing race. Considering that Neil Druckmann was one of the writers of this game, I really was almost positive that one of our beloved characters was going to bite the dust in this game. Druckmann wrote The Last of Us, which is my favorite game of all time, and really a very dark game with a slightly different tone than Uncharted 4. Although this game isn't near as dark as The Last of Us, it has some similar themes to it. It really asks you as the gamer how far you would go to save the ones you love, or even to make them happy. And I bring this up because I thought that Rafe and Nadine were going to kill one of our characters because I think that would have raised the stakes of this game even higher than they already were. Not that I was necessarily out for blood, but I was sort of hoping that our heroes would face some sort of consequences for their reckless behavior. There were a couple instances where our beloved characters considered possibly just leaving this all behind and moving on because they actually wanted to walk away from this in one piece. Now before this game came out, there were rumors circulating that there was going to be a somewhat controversial ending. And I thought to myself, okay, that means that a character you like is probably going to die here. Because like I said, that heightens the stakes of the story and ultimately provides a darker, grittier, and more dramatic tone. And when I got to the ending, and probably the most straightforward happy ending you could have gotten, I was initially slightly happy and slightly disappointed. I was happy because all of our beloved characters made it out alive, and they mostly got what they wanted out of the adventure other than the entire $400 million treasure. I was disappointed because like I said, our characters never really faced any legitimate consequences for their reckless behavior. Sam especially just continued to keep putting everyone in harm's way, and Drake seemed to follow him in that regard, just like when they were kids. In the very end of the game, when Sam separates himself from Sully, Alana, and Drake, and Drake goes after Sam, I thought, well, this thief's luck is finally going to run out, especially when Alana said this. Don't even think about not coming back. Drake and Sam just kept pressing forward in every situation where maybe their better judgment was telling them to walk away from this. And I thought that eventually this mentality is going to catch up with them in a not so happy way, but it never really did. One thing I think that I and everyone else has to understand though, is that this is not The Last of Us. Whether Neil Druckmann wrote this game or not, Uncharted is a much more lighthearted and not nearly as grounded a series. Once I thought about it some more, I came to actually like this ending because it feels more like your standard action adventure ending where everyone learns something and is happy. Okay, so let's discuss the actual gameplay now. The fighting mechanics feel smoother than they ever have for me in any Uncharted game. I really enjoyed all the combat sequences where I was expected to mow down all the shoreline mercenaries in between me and Avery's treasure. The battles never felt like a chore, and these battles were some of the most fun I'd had in any game, period. Another thing this game did really, really well was the chase scenes. These were extremely fun to take part in, were honestly some of the most fun I'd had in any game ever. These chase scenes made me feel a rush of thrills that I don't even think a movie with similar content could make me feel. This is because as the player, I'm taking part in this hugely immersive experience myself and getting to resolve this chase via my own methods. These chase scenes were extremely well done, and I can't even imagine all the work it must have taken Naughty Dog to create these beautifully adventurous and thrilling chase scenes. I also feel like the climbing and scaling of walls and cliffs was as smooth as it's ever been in any Uncharted game. The addition of the rope was fantastic, and I honestly don't know how I ever got around without it before. Swinging and jumping to my next destination was so much fun, and it made traveling around really enjoyable. Another big element of the Uncharted games are the puzzles. To be completely honest, I'm not much of a puzzle guy. I totally understand that for treasure hunting you kinda need puzzles, but I honestly don't really like doing them very much as I usually struggle with them for a while until I finally figure them out. Each time a puzzle comes up, I'm just like, ugh, but I wanna scale walls and fight mercenaries, don't make me do another puzzle. These puzzles were very creative though, as are all puzzles in the Uncharted series, I'm just not a puzzle guy myself. The graphics in this game are absolutely phenomenal and are some of the best that I've seen in any video game ever. I honestly think that the cutscene graphics are right there with The Last of Us and maybe slightly even better in my opinion, which is hard for me to say because I pretty much love any and all aspects of that game. Aside from the AI which has similar troubles in this game, sometimes the enemy AI would react in somewhat unrealistic ways that could slightly lower the immersive element of this game. 
I also can't help but notice that the AI system also bears a slight resemblance to the Assassin's Creed AI system as well. This was just a slight hiccup for my experience overall though. As a whole though, this game is probably my second favorite game that I've ever played, right behind The Last of Us and just barely surpassing Infamous Second Son. The characters are fantastic, the dialogue's extremely well written, the fight and chase scenes are epic, the scenery is amazing, and the in-game and cutscene graphics are fantastic. I was slightly disappointed initially with the straightforward ending and the enemy AI, but these were only slight hiccups as I said before. I'm giving this game a 9.5 out of 10 for all the reasons I laid out in this video. So did you guys beat Uncharted 4 yet? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to click that like button and to subscribe to my channel for future videos just like this one. That's all for now, this is Will Foxification signing off.